Mirosh Nishenko looks to impress. Your Locked On Capitals, your daily podcast on the Washington Capitals. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, hello and welcome into this edition of Locked on Capitals. I'm so glad you decided to join me today. As always, this podcast is free and available on all the major platforms, including the SiriusXM app and on YouTube. And I want to thank you for making this your first listen each and every day. My name is Dan Holmey. You can find me on Twitter. It's at DanCaps218. You can find the show on Twitter. It's at LockedOnCaps. And the best way that you can help grow the show is to head on over to YouTube and subscribe to Locked On Capitals and comment anything down below. In today's episode of Locked On Capitals, we talk about Cap's seventh round pick, Antoine Keller. Most people said, yeah, that's great. They they drafted a goalie, but in the seventh round, he isn't really poised for anything. We'll talk about that in the show. A little bit later, it will be a battle in camp this fall. Make no mistake about it as a few Capitals players are going to be vying for jobs. Who am I talking about? Alexi Protus, Connor McMichael, and yes, even Ivan Mirshnyshenko. We'll talk about that. But just to get it going here, what is ultimately the plan for Ivan Mirshnyshenko? Last season, uh, during the draft, they drafted him, and uh, he would have been drafted much higher. We know that, except for uh, his Hodgkin's lymphoma. And uh, what it speaks to for me is the resilience in Ivan, the fact that he is able to overcome great obstacles. Uh, One of the things that uh, they were talking about was that he had lost so much weight that his pants were kind of just hanging on his hips, just barely hanging on there. Ross Mahoney was talking about it. But as I was looking at Twitter just the other day, I saw him in the weight room in a look of determination as he was doing squats, lifting him up and down. I think that Ivan is going to impress. I think he is going to be fighting tooth and nail for the roster, not on the Hershey Bears, for the Capitals. And I do think that it's possible. And why do I think it's possible? If we want to rewind time a little bit, we could take a look to the season before when Alexi Protus came into camp. I don't think he was really poised for anything, but he played so well that the Capitals could not send him down. It's just, he played that well. Is that the trajectory for Mr. Ivan Mirishnashenko? I guess that remains to be seen. Mirishnashenko, who signed his entry-level deal with the Caps in June, was the biggest standout at the team's camp, showcasing his shot, high hockey IQ, and strength. Everyone that was at camp, players and coaches alike, speak glowingly of him. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see where he lands. As we know, he broke his deal off with the KHL team. And I think at minimum, he's going to be playing with the Hershey Bears. But I think that he has hopes uh, and dreams for more as he prepares to begin his pro career in North America this season after terminating his NHL or KHL contract. The only question facing Miro is where will he start the 23-24 season? Again, I think that a lot of people have him penciled in down in Hershey. Listen, as a person that covers this team, I think that he is going to really duke it out with McMichael and Protus and say, I know that you guys think that these jobs are yours, but I'm going to fight you for them. And I think that Ivan is just the guy for that kind of job. Of course, my goal is to make the NHL team. Obviously, there are a lot of great players, a lot of veteran players on this team, so it will be difficult, but that's my goal. That's what I'm aiming for, Miro said in July through his interpreter. And that just speaks to his determination. And it kind of speaks volumes of his character. I mean, let's face it. A lot of people, if they would have been diagnosed with uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma, they might have hung it up and said, you know, this is too much for me. But it speaks to the resiliency and the tenacity of Ivan. And I think that that will bode well for his career. I also think it will bode well for his uh, future uh, with the Capitals and, you know, the long-term plan for his um, hockey playing Uh, Like I was talking about earlier there, his blue jeans were hanging off his hips, Ross Mahoney said. It led him to falling down the draft rankings and the Caps would make no mistake taking him 20th overall and feeling confident that once he was healthy, he'd be an impact player. And I don't think that they were wrong. I don't think Ross Mahoney, I don't think the scouts, I don't think the medical staff were wrong. I do think that he is going to have a future 
sooner than anyone thought. I mean, before uh, he terminated his contract with the KHL, people had him, you know, a couple of years out, but he is climbing that ladder much quicker than anyone thought. That is what I'm talking about. That's why I think we might see him in a red sweater instead of a brown sweater in the fall. He gained all of his weight and strength back and then some, and he lost in chemo, that he lost in chemotherapy. And after months of preparation, he returned to game action in November for Avgan Omsk's MHL affiliate. Mir Shneshenko's hot start led him to making the KHL de debut shortly after the season started. He finished the year with 23 KHL games under his belt. And the KHL is, you know, a legitimate hockey league. It is, you know, over in Russia and it's where their best go to play. So it's not like he was just toiling in a, a junior league or, you know, some bar league team. He was playing with really great competition and he excelled in Russia. I think that he will over in the United States as well. And uh, one of the things that they were talking about with him is just, like I said, his ability to work so hard in his resiliency. Uh, I think that, again, you're, you're going to see him, I think, sooner uh, than later. The Russian's resilience speaks volumes and he has been putting the work in and focusing on key areas of his game that can help him secure a spot at the NHL. And if he comes to training camp displaying that confidence, it can lead to a roster spot. Um, there's also certainly more opportunity for Miro to come in surprise and win a spot. The team is placing emphasis on injecting youth into the roster and his skill set and rapid development make it entirely possible. Uh, this piece was in the uh, hockey news, and uh, I do think it's the case. And I've kind of been following, you know, his steps in the offseason. He has been putting in the work. He's been putting in the diligent effort to impress I do think he has what it takes. I guess what it's all going to come down to, and I think everyone is going to want to pay close attention to camp. And usually they post video. So if you're, uh, let me rephrase that. If you're in DC, if you can be at MedStar Ice Complex, great. But if you live outside of the DC area, go to WashingtonCapitals.com and take a look at the video clips and see how they're progressing I do think that, I mean, he's going to surprise a lot of people. Uh, like I uh, alluded to earlier there with Alexi Protus, many people didn't really have him pegged for making the Capitals last season, but he did because he played so well. Um, and that's going to be the interesting question. We hear a lot about Connor McMichael and, and Hendricks LaPierre and those kind of players, and I'll talk about them in the next segment, but expect Miro to challenge and uh, cause that's what this is all about. We heard, you know, that Spencer Carberry came here to win a cup of course but also to bring along this youth that we've heard of for the longest time, right? We've always heard that this team wants to get younger and faster. And next year is going to be the year for Connor McMichael or Alexi Protus or all these players. And if it's a guy like Connor McMichael, you know, that that's a tough position, but that's what I think that, uh, that Mira was going to come in there. And if I'm going to make a prediction right now, a way too early prediction, you hear a lot of those things. I think that Ivan makes the caps. I really do. As I record this towards the tail end of July, just based on everything that I've seen, I think that Ivan is going to crack the team out of camp. That's my bold prediction right now. Um, is there a chance that if he doesn't excel, that he might get sent down to Hershey at some point next season? But my prediction, stamping it right now in July, is that Ivan Miroshnashenko breaks camp with the Capitals and starts the season on the big team. That is how hyped, that is how excited I am for his future. And um, it's going to be interesting to see if that comes to fruition. But everything that I've seen, it's like, wow, I didn't see that coming. I had kind of written him off for a couple of years, but he broke that contract with the KHL. I see him putting in extra work in the weight room. I see him doing everything that he needs to do to prepare himself for the rigors of the NHL. He lost all that weight. He put it on. He's hitting the gym. He's bulking it up. He is doing everything according to the textbook. I think that if he impresses in camp, which I have no reason to feel that he won't, I think that he is absolutely destined to be on the Capitals in the fall. And uh, it'll be interesting to see if that comes true, but I am excited. And as Caps fans, you should be excited. This is the future that we've all heard about. And it might be coming a lot sooner than you think. All right, so coming up here, we will talk about the other players that are going to vie for those positions. We heard what uh, Brian McClellan said, that he has a lot of those players penciled in. Who are those players I'm going to talk about? I'll talk about that straight ahead.
Take your first swing at betting MLB on FanDuel and get 10 times your first bet amount in bonus bets up to $200. That's right. Just bet 20 bucks and you'll land $200 in bonus bets. Win or lose, that's $200 you can spend on betting everything from the money line to the over-under to who you think is going to hit the first home run. All on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Plus, when you get paid, you get paid instantly. It doesn't get any better than instantly. There's no better place to bet on MLB than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So sign up today. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get up to $200 in bonus bets. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on FanDuel, official partner of Major League Baseball. All right, welcome back into this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Make sure and subscribe or follow Locked On Capitals wherever you find your podcasts and on YouTube. I have a lot of great guests lined up for you this summer, not to mention camp is not too far away, and I will have you guys covered every step of the way. All right, in this next segment here, we were going to talk about Connor McMichael. We're going to talk about Alexi Protus and who I talked about in the first segment, Ivan Mirishnyshenko. And what is this team going to look like in the fall? There's not a lot of roster spots. We know that. So the few spots that are available are going to be a dogfight over. It's not going to be, well, Connor McMichael is, you know, the next guy on the depth chart and he deserves it. So let's just give it to Connor McMichael and uh, or Alexi Protus because he was on the big team. Again, I think that they are going to give all these players a nice, good, hard look and and see who's most qualified. And, you know, I do think that Connor McMichael is going to battle for it. I think that he really showed who he is as a player. I think he showed maturity beyond his years uh, that he got called up last season. You know, he skated some on the fourth line and, you know, was a healthy scratch for a line share of his time on the big team and then got sent down to Hershey, but made the most of it. He didn't sulk. He didn't say, woe is me. He made the most of his opportunity and subsequently the Hershey Bears won the Calder Cup. So that's what I'm talking about. It is going to be exciting. And I know that this is July, the tail end of July here, but I am pumped. I'm excited for camp. And I want you guys to feel that excitement as well, as I think that there are going to be a lot of those young players that we heard about for the longest time are going to come out and impress. Uh, Brian McClellan talked about his confidence I think that it was a knee-jerk comment to make. I don't think that, you know, when you're making these kind of comments, you know, this was earlier in the summer around the draft. I don't think that you are going to anoint anyone a position, but he's kind of penciled some of these guys in. Connor McMichael, the team's first round pick in 2019, as well as fellow forwards Alexi Protus and Beck Malenstein are expected to break, break a camp on the Caps roster. I'm going to tell you this right now. That's false. That is not going to be the case. Connor McMichael, Alexi Brodus, and Beck Malenstein, there's just not enough dance partners out there. There's not enough spots. There are not enough openings in the roster for McMichael, Protus, and Malenstein, and ostensibly Ivan Mirishnyshenko to fit out on the ice. It's just not going to happen. My question is, is if that was true, who's coming out of the lineup so those guys can come in? It, I, I talk about that all the time on the show. And like when I was talking with Bailey uh, from the Washington Post, she said, it's not like who comes out, it's who's going to play so well that they have to have a spot on this team. But I'm just saying, just looking at this here, Connor McMichael, Protus, and Malenstein all breaking, it's just not going to be, uh, it's not going to be the case. I think they all had good playoff. They're all together, playing together well, McClellan said, the Caps GM. All of them add different elements to our lineup. I would more than likely pencil them in for next year. And I know that that is what he said. I'm here to tell you that that was just, he just kind of said that off the cuff. Um, if you look at the roster, if you are familiar with this team, there's not enough spots for all of them. I do see Beck Malenstein playing on this team on the fourth line. I think that he earned that spot. I think he played so well. I think he has that physical presence, kind of, you know, the prototypical Washington capital uh, and kind of like the prototypical fourth liner. I think that he is tailor-made to play on the fourth line for the Caps. Uh, we know that Hathaway is out of the lineup. And uh, so we have Dow down there and, uh, and Carl Hagelin is most likely out of the equation there. So it's going to be interesting to see 
you know, that, you know, how it shapes out. That's my prediction that Beck Malenstein makes the team on the fourth line. I'm pretty excited about it. Protus having played in 91 games with the Caps over the past two seasons has the most NHL experience of the three. Uh, I, again, I don't think that that really matters too much. I mean, it matters to an extent, but it's a league of what have you done for me lately? It's not what you did last year. It's not what you did the year before. How are you playing in camp and who's going to show up? Who is going to answer the bell when it's wrong, right? That's what it's all about. And that's why I'm so hyped on, on Mirishnashenko. But I also think that McMichael as well is going to fight him for that. Uh, but speaking of Protus here, 13 points on five goals and eight assists. Listen, I don't want to disparage Protus. I think that he really impressed last season. I think he kind of proved to a lot of Capitals fans and coaches why he belongs. Um, but, you know, it was a bit of a bumpier ride for him, i got to be honest with you. Um, he played really well in camp, but then it was, again, a bit more up and down. Nick Michael is in a similar spot, having played 75 NHL games, including 68 during the 21-22 season, albeit mostly away from his natural center position. And that's what it's all about for me. Connor McMichael, they have got to find a way for him to play at the center position. I know he will play wing and he can play wing, but where he is going to excel is at the center position. Again, not to beat a dead horse here, but where is he going to fit? Who's coming out so he can go in? That is the difficult position. Uh, so just talking about McMichael here, he spent most of the past two seasons with the Bears recording 39 regular season points before tallying 10 in 20 playoff games. That is a guy that is ready for the big stage. The AHL is just one step down from the NHL, and he answered on the AHL's biggest stage, the Calder Cup, and the Bears won a Calder Cup for the first time in quite some time. So, McMichael, hey, I'm hyped on McMichael as well. I want him to play on this team. I want all of those guys that I listed before on this team. It's just going to be difficult to find spots for all of them, suffices to say. Protus and Malenstein ended the regular season in Washington before joining the Bears, and that's what helped them out. They were eligible, and I will say that Protus and Malenstein helped in that regard to see them do well at that level of play in the finals and then winning the championship, Max said. I think that just solidifies their development, and you would think so, right? You think that that would be the case, uh, but with the return of centers Kuzi, Strom, Backstrom, and Dowd, McMichael appears likely to be resigned to the wing once again this piece in Washington hockey now. That's the tough part. But, and you know, if you're going to ask McMichael, there is a spot for you on this team. I know they don't have these kind of conversations. The GM makes the decision. They don't ask you, well, what would you like to do? This is what you're going to do. Um, but I'm just saying that if you were to ask him, he would say, well, of course I'll play the wing. I want to play in the NHL. I want to play under the lights. I want to get that NHL paycheck. So of course that's what he would love to do. Is that ultimately going to be the case that is the question. But again, not just, I can underline this in this episode, pay attention to camp this fall. It is going to be a gun show, a shootout at the OK Corral uh, between Beck Malenstein and Ivan Mirishnashenko and Protus. It's going to be exciting to watch. And I'm, you know, let the best man win. There's no politics involved. I don't think there's any favoritism. I don't think they're going to go with McMichael because of where he stands in the organization or Protus because he's, you know, had all this NHL experience. It is going to be based on valor and how well you played in camp and that is what it is going to be and as caps fans you should be pumped all right so coming up straight ahead here we will talk about antoine keller who is that we'll talk about him straight ahead all right welcome back into this edition of locked on capitals part of the locked on podcast network your team every day. So the caps in this draft here, uh, we, you know, we made all the big selections on this team during the draft. And then we, you know, we, we signed or we selected Leonard, we signed Chris Stahl. We did all of those things. And a lot of the beat writers I heard kind of packed up their laptops and, you know, put all their stuff in a bag and we're getting ready to leave when the capitals announced that they selected a goaltender and uh, I'm always excited when they select a goaltender. I got to be honest with you, because this team has a long history of selecting really great goaltenders. If you want to recount some of them uh, just through the ranks, I mean, Holtby and Grubauer and um, 
you know, Hunter Shepard and, you know, just a long list of really great goalies that have gone on either with the Capitals or gone on to other organizations. But suffice it to say, they always have a good nose when it comes to picking a goalie. So when they picked Antoine Keller in the seventh round, um, I've spoke to quite a few beat writers and they're like, well, listen, Dan, I know they selected a goalie, but the seventh round, there's a pretty good chance that he might not ever even play with the Caps, much less the NHL. But I think that his trajectory is a little bit different because what is one of the things that I noticed is that Ross Mahoney was psyched. He was pumped. And what I've heard, I wasn't there, but I heard, you know, and I observed in the videos is that he exuded uh, a lot of uh, energy and excitement about uh, Antoine Keller. And why would he do that for a seventh round pick? Well, as we know, he is a man from France and came over uh, to development camp, all expenses paid and impressed. He said, well, why wouldn't I? Why wouldn't I want to make the most of my opportunity? Um, and that's what he did. And I think it speaks volumes of him, however, that he was uh, willing to come over. Um, I mean, I know that that is a long flight, but I suppose if you're spending, you know, a, a majority of your life playing hockey, you would relish that moment. Brian McClellan finally made a deal trading their seventh round pick in next year's draft to the San Jose Sharks for their seventh round pick in this year's draft. So there was definitely something that they saw in Antoine Keller that made them do that. I don't think that they would have just traded that with San Jose to do that. There is something intrinsically that they like about Antoine Keller. And I'm kind of excited to see how he materializes since he was drafted by the Caps. Everything has gone quickly for Keller. The next day, the goal cap goalkeeper of the France U20 team took a plane from Geneva to the capital of the United States heading for development camp on July 1st. It's where there are all the young players drafted and some players invited by the team. It's really how to get to know the staff, the infrastructure, the operation, explained Keller. I went to Washington, all, ex all expenses paid for a week to play hockey. It was great. I got to think that's a pretty special moment um, in a young hockey player's life. If the Capitals ever said, Dan, we're flying you to D.C., all expenses paid, you got to, you, you, I'm just going to tell you, I'd be most excited. And I'm not a hockey player, but, you know, I'm just trying to relate to him here a little bit. North American hockey is very different, uh, and they're talking here about why they are almost kind of preparing him for the North American ice, the rink size, because things are different over in Europe. Why are they fast-tracking Antoine Keller if they don't have any big plans for him? I do think that they do have some long-term plans for him. North American hockey is very different. Already the rinks are smaller for a goalkeeper. It changes a lot of things in terms of position in different games. I think Washington is really going to look at that this year, how I adapt to those rinks. Underline that. How am I going to adapt to those rinks? I think that that's interesting. And I do think that he has a future in the Capitals organization at large. I don't know if it's going to ever be on the big team, uh, but potentially with the Stingrays, with the Bears, potentially. I like playing in smaller ice rinks. I had the opportunity to play there, play there during the World Championship in Norway and I really liked it. Keller is just 18 years old with dreams of grandeur, I'm sure, of playing in the NHL. And, uh, you know, one of the things they talked about is his confidence. And I think that confidence sometimes can speak louder than a skill set. Sometimes if you walk into the room uh, and you have great confidence, uh, sometimes that will, that, that'll speak even more than a skill set. I mean, if you want to take a look at that, even in the dating world, come on, guys. You have, the most confident guy gets the girl, that kind of thing. So confidence can go a long way. I'm I'm quite confident. I did the season with the pros in Geneva, all training and quite a few matches as a substitute. I followed them throughout the playoffs, so I was able to see what professional coaching was like, and for sure this experience will be great help to me in Canada. This piece in Nova Caps are talking about Antoine Keller, and uh, I am excited about that, and I don't know what it is about goalies, but you know I always get charged up uh, when I hear the Capitals uh, selected a goalie in the draft. You know, I look historically, you know, with like Phoenix Copley even and, and how some of those players that, you know, maybe necessarily didn't find their home uh, in the Washington Capitals organization or they went on to greater things. I mean, take a look at Copley. He was a guy that the Capitals for the longest time tried to make it work. It just it, it, it wouldn't work. And guess what? He went out to the Kings and killed it. He helped the Kings last season. And a lot of people were like, is that the Phoenix Copley from the Capitals that's doing so well for the Kings? 
So it's it's just a funny thing. Sometimes a change of scenery, a change of zip code can be exactly what the doctor ordered. And uh, so it's going to be interesting to see what happens with him. You take a look at Grubauer and Varlamov and, and Holpe and all these other players that, you know, and Holpe did play well with the Capitals, so as did Grubauer, but they also went on to greater things as well. So the Capitals have a long history, a long lineage of selecting really great goalies. Is Antoine Keller also going to be included in that conversation? I guess only time will tell, but I am excited. If you can't tell, I am excited for next season, not only for what's happening with the Capitals, but to kind of sit back and and, and check the stats. Well, how is Antoine Keller doing? And, and say, you know, this player didn't, uh, you know, cut the team with the Capitals. How are they doing down in Hershey? It's just the whole thing in a pot just gets me pumped up for next season. And uh, I guess that's ultimately why I'm such a big NHL fan. That's why I'm such a big Capitals fan. Because let's face it, we don't know exactly what next season holds. I would like to think that Brian McClellan has an, another big move up his sleeve, but does he? And ultimately, who would that be and how would it work? That's what gets me excited. You know, the GM move. Well, we traded this player and that player to make it work. And I'm like, wow, why didn't I think of that? And I'm like, that's why you're the GM. And that's why I'm talking on this show right now. But in any event, I am excited for Capitals uh, the next season. And I hope you are as well. Once again, I want to thank you for joining me on this edition of Locked On Capitals. And are you a fan of DC sports? Well, of course you are. You're listening to a Capitals podcast. Nationals baseball is in full effect. So head on over to Locked On Nationals, not to mention that Commanders football is not far away. So head on over to Locked On Commanders. And also down from there is Locked On Wizards and, of course, Locked On Capitals. Locked On, your DC source for great podcasting. So check out those podcasts today. All right. Once again, I want to thank you for joining me on this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team. Every day, my name is Dan Holmey, and I'll talk to you again next time.